Oh, and I did my whole intro too and everything. Unlucky. Yeah, well, big unlucky. Hello, guys. Welcome. Should I redo it? Nah, it's too late. It's all right. Uh, We're into the we draft We can talk already. about season 12's finals after uh, <laughs> game one, but let's let's get into the talking about the draft here in these two teams. Stun Gaming Nebula versus Requiem Collective Gaming Abyssal Nightmare. We're getting into the draft of game one. Sorry about not being able to hear the intro, guys, but uh, we already got ooh, a Neela pick. I'm not sure how good Neela actually is into Misfortune because I think Misfortune's going to be able to dominate that lane. But I do like that there's a Jarvan there that's going to be strong early and can maybe help protect that Neela on the bot side. Definitely. And uh, it seems like the RCG composition so far is very much interested in going forward. But that is quite the team fight that's being set up over here by gaming nebula they've got uh the amumu to set up for the misfortune ult and mordekaiser another nice strong frontliner here gonna potentially look to deny you know any kind of aggressive uh, dive in uh, but the early game you know as you were just talking about tiger definitely something that we're still going to be needing to watch out for uh from the side of rcg nasus interestingly going to be rounding out their first round of picks presumably uh up there on the top side for peo well, NASA's support has been gaining popularity recently, and especially with the recent patch update that uh, boosted the strength of the W, I think that there's a, a real possibility that we'll see a NASA support with W Max and uh, trying to have an impact. But if it is that, then I have some concerns about that because I don't think that Neela is exactly the best at taking advantage of the armor shred on Nasus's E. And Misfortune doesn't get hurt the most of any AD carry by the exhaust that's on his W. So it could be top, like you're saying. And if it's top, I think that it's just like a mad matchup into Mordekaiser. Uh, but that flexibility is kind of something that's relatively new that we're seeing with Nasus definitely the case i do see a few games in uh in peo's op.gg here he does have uh 17 games on the nasa so far this season so i do think that's likely where the dog is going to end up that is the morgana uh so almost assuredly now going to be the nasa's top and the morgana going to be paired up with that neela in the bottom lane although i guess it could be morgana mid you know technically speaking Still some yeah. flex opportunities alive here. Yeah, no, you, I I believe that you're going to be correct on this one, though. I think Morgana makes a decent amount of sense here uh, with the spell shield kind of allowing Neela to be unlocked a little bit. Uh, but I think that we're still looking at a situation where stun gaming should have the lane prio in bot lane and presumably also in top lane. So I'll really be looking for uh, Requiem Collective with that counter pick mid to be able to lock in something where they can get advantage. In oh, it's a Mumu flex to jungle as well and brand mm. support. Let's go. Okay, yeah. That is a, an interesting choice there. I do feel like the Misfortune of Mumu lane is a fairly strong one, so I am I am definitely interested by this decision. Maybe they're just feeling like the Morgana counteracts what the Amumu is trying to do uh, too severely, so they're, they're just calling an audible here on the side of Stunned Gaming and sending the Amumu into the jungle, as you say. Going to lock in the brand uh, down there for their support for Hillisang in the bottom lane. And then the Swain, going to be the last pick for Abyssal Nightmare. So that counter pick into the Sidra mid. What do you think about it, Tiger? I think that Swain should do a pretty good job of getting a little bit of push in the lane and being able to impact the side lane. I'll be watching to see if uh, we get a few points put into that uh, Vision of Empire, Swain's W. If you get, like, three points in it, then you can just step into the river and drop it in the side lane. It extends the range the more points that you have in it. So I think that that would be a really nice adaptation to see 
and presuming that they're going to be pushed in in the other two lanes, then that can help set up a gank as well. Uh, and I think that the Swain pick in general is good in their team composition because what they really want to do is just kind of get into the face of the enemy team. And, uh, and Swain's really good at being a part of that big group wombo combo and drain tanking the front line. So they're going to have a lot of AoE spells that they're going to try to drop in team fights. And uh, I think that having that little addition to the front line is going to help them out. Yeah, absolutely. It, it definitely feels like a big old death ball comp here for Abyssal Nightmare. Um, I do feel like they have the stronger team fighting composition, especially when we look over here for stun gaming. They have a lot of squishier members. You know, while that brand pick for the support position should probably do pretty well in the lane, I think we, we are imagining here. Um, but he's he's not really going to allow you a whole lot of structure in your team fights. I mean, he's he's certainly going to bring damage, no doubt about that. But uh, oh, if my. if this Jarvan, if the Neela, if the Swain, you know, is is on top of the back line here, I don't know if Stun Gaming is going to have too many answers. Yeah, one thing that I'm looking at is I think that all the damage should be coming through in team fights first of all because it's going to be very difficult for requiem collective to set up a team fight where they're not all standing on top of each other and when you're brand then having them stand on top of each other means that you're getting all of the bounces off of your pyroclasm uh and i think that especially with neela being the adc uh, it's going to be hard to get those squishy members away from that burst damage. So they're, they're at high risk of just being hit with the Curse of the Sad Mummy and then everything else comes over the top and just bursts them out. So it'll be really important for them to space properly and potentially come in from different angles. And really an X factor that I see in these fights is who is going to get Mordekaiser ulted. I think that uh, being able to take one member out is going to be uh, really convenient in some of these team fights, but it'll be interesting to see who he goes for, and obviously the black shield from Morgana is going to stop some of that ability. So uh, I think that we should have some really big team fights here, and I th I'm excited to see how these teams play those out. Yeah, absolutely, Tiger. Uh, I like the call out. We have some very impactful abilities here in this game that we really need to be watching out for. As you just mentioned, the Mordekaiser ultimate, getting people in the death realm, uh, can really swing fights very significantly. And then the Black Shield as well could even counteract that entirely if it's timed very well here from spoils. So definitely going to be keeping our eyes on those two players to see what they can get done. But Tiger. Uh, we have talked a lot about the team fights here already, but we do have to play the early game before we get there. And I kind of want to pick your brain a little bit on what we think this might look like. We, we discussed it a little bit earlier, saying that the Jarvan obviously does have a lot of early game power. And when you have something like the Morgana in the bottom lane, that could that does provide you right with, with some setup. Uh, Swain in the mid lane as well. Some setup there also, where Jarvan can come in and potentially make something happen. Uh, but, you know, Amumu is not necessarily a slouch in the early game either, and Syndra notoriously strong in those first few levels in the laning phase. Uh, where, where do you think the junglers are going to look to prioritize early on? Yeah, quite right. I think that you make great points about where the bottom and middle lanes are going to have that gank set up properly. Um, I think that especially for stunned gaming, they're going to be looking to go for some mid lane ganks because once you got level three on the bot lane, the black shield can really throw a wrench into some of these ganks. And there's, there's a few slows in the bottom lane, but unless Brand can find a clear shot to land his stun, uh, they don't have a lot of setup of their own. They just kind of wait for two bandage tosses to connect. So I think that uh, really ganking towards that Syndra is going to be the best option for Gimpties. But uh, I think that Calmed is going to have probably three gankable lanes, presumably. I mean, Nasus being able to put the slow down 
on to Mordecai's or it means that there should be some setup there as well. But I would look towards that bot lane since I think that's the one that's most likely to need the help and be pushed in. And then if they can get those kills, I think that they are kind of the win condition. When you have a Neela, you you want to play through the Neela. All right, well, we'll just have to see if things go as you say. But we have only about a minute left on this spectator delay, everyone. So, Tiger, let me get uh, your first prediction of Season 13. Who do you think is going to take Game 1 in our first streamed game of the new season? I've got to go with Stunned Gaming. I, I'm a big fan of the misfortune here, and I'm I'm excited about this brand pick. Pulling okay. the little bit of a reverse and picking that in the Morgana, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that one plays out. All right, folks. Well, we are going to go to a quick break while we get set up in the game. Before we get underway, don't go anywhere. We will be back with Style Esports right after this. everyone welcome to summoners rift for our first streamed game of season 13 thank you all for joining us we do have stunned gaming nebula here on the blue side and then of course rcg requiem collective taking up positions on the red Let me take a quick second here to fix the scoreboard for you looking like a pretty conservative opening from both sides eh tiger yeah, just getting out onto the map, making sure no shenanigans go down. But I want to take a quick look at the runes and uh, summoner spells here. Uh, and particularly up in that top lane, Peyo taking the fleet footwork plus ghost. 
So that's going to be a speedy doggy there in the top lane. I'm thinking that Nass is not noted for the ability to go for kills at level 1. But maybe once we get uh, level 6s coming through in the top lane, that's going to be a place where we can look for more action than I had originally thought. Yeah, I do feel like... Um... Nasus is at risk of getting bullied out a little bit in the early game. I do feel like Mordekaiser is quite strong in a lot of these melee matchups, so I think the fleet footwork does make some sense to help him sustain up a little bit here and not get pushed out of the lane too severely. Uh, but it is a little bit unorthodox, so we'll have to track that, see how it all goes for him. We did have our junglers starting on opposite sides of the rift here for our first game, Jarvan. Coming from the bottom side, going to be pathing up towards that top lane. And Amumu, it looks like an, he's going to pay attention towards the bot side. We are seeing Peyo get pulled back by the Death's Grasp. And there's the Obliterate coming down. Nass is taking one of those nasty trades that I was just predicting a moment ago. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's a little bit tough in the early game, especially with no teleport. So we'll see if that early game weakness is going to get punished at all. Uh, could be an area where a gank gets threatened. I didn't talk about any thoughts of top lane ganks because I didn't think we'd see any, but you, n you never know. I mean, Mordekaiser's setup is uh, good enough that if there's a low health bar, that's definitely a place they can go. Uh, but I, I like that we're already seeing spoils connecting on some of these dark bindings in the bot lane. That, that hypes me up for maybe seeing some all-ins coming through there. Absolutely. Something that Nyla should be more than capable of. We are running the uh, double combat summoners down there for the side of uh, Requiem Collective, of course. As uh, the Exhausted Knight. Also in the mid lane here, we're seeing Kitsune land quite a lot of these never moves, collecting a lot of soul fragments for himself already. Seen at least a few of those, but Gimpthys making his way into the bottom lane. Black Shield a little bit late there, or comes out onto the Nyla. Locks down the Morgana for a little while. Spoils maybe in some trouble, taking a lot of damage here, but Gimpthys taking even more. And that's going to be the first blood going over to the RCG support. And now it's uh, Stun Gaming trying to make their way out. It looks like they will only lose the jungler, but the gank backfires for Gimpthys, and it's Requiem Collective on the board. Yeah, that was... Kind of the reason why you pick Morgana into a Mumu, assuming that it'll go into the support role. It happens anyways, even though it's a jungle of Mumu. <laughs> the Black Shield goes down. The Black Shield wasn't even on the right member to block the bandage toss, but the Black or the Dark Bind. Okay, Jarvan coming in here into the top side. Tortuga in a two v one situation. Death's Grasp pulls the Jarvan back, but that's bet he's between Mordekaiser and his tower now, and Tortuga just has no way out. He's going to try and maybe take one with him. Going to have Q back off cooldown soon. He flashes away, but he's still going down. He does get the flash out of the Jarvan in payments, but uh, flash for flash, and that is 2-0 now for Requiem Collective Abyssal Nightmare. Here in game one, that's another never move landing. Going to land the W as well. Kitsune has the flash. Could have maybe flashed for that but would have put himself very deep under the tower. Didn't want to go for it, but uh, that is pressure across the map now. Or that is nightmare. extremely unlucky for Kitsune. If the level up doesn't come through for Bugen, that's totally a kill. There's no <laughs> way to avoid that, and uh, just a little bit of an unfortunate situation there. But Requiem Collective Gaming in a really good spot right now, getting those first two kills. Uh, not on necessarily the members that you wanted and on that gank i thought calm probably doesn't need to flash because payo should just be able to ghost for it but mm -hmm. you know still getting the kills is getting the kills and uh yeah. that they will absolutely take that first drake is now on the map so we'll see if they want to go towards that anytime soon but right now they have that 1k gold lead Side of Abyssal Nightmare looking to continue this early game advantage. Remember, they do have the stronger team fighting composition as well. I think we are in agreement uh, about that, Tiger. And if they can get to the mid game in a favorable position for themselves, they are going to be very heavily favored to take game number one here. I really want to check in here actually on Swain Soul Fragments. He's landed so many spells already, but hang on, let's take a look at this fight first. 
We got a lot of people converging right now here towards this bottom side. Black Shield comes down, Nyla dashes away. Jarvan going back in with the EQ combo. Root comes down onto Hill saying the brand looks like he will fall first, but the jungler is traded in return. Conqueror stack for Sunbird though. Needs his dash to come back. Flashes for it. Gets the kill. Flashing after him now is the Amumu. Needs a little bit more damage from the W and the tears will take down the Nyla. The sadness was overwhelming. Nyla will fall, but Gimpty's now. He has too many friends down here in the bottom lane. He doesn't have any way out whatsoever. Just going to get cleaned up there by the mid laner. Overall, I believe that was a three for two in favor of Abyssal Nightmare. Requiem Collective still in the lead. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much even. There's there's not a whole lot that's gained either way. The mid wave gets pushed in by Bugan, so I think that the gold stays just about even. Uh, but... That's that's kind of a play that's being gone for by uh, Stun Gaming, and they aren't able to come out on top, so that definitely feels a lot worse for them. Uh, but uh, we'll see if they get uh, taken out on this gank coming through from Calm ah. here. Really heavy focus here from the Jarvan. Once again, back in the bottom side, really biding his time here, not wanting to go for anything, even as the enemy bottom lane harasses his AD carry under the tower there. We'll just back off for now. Lots of vision, actually, from Stunned Gaming towards that bottom side river. You see the double control wards come down. They do not want to suffer another gank from Palm's Jarvan. Yeah. He's not about seeing it coming first. And I think that uh, that gank in the bot lane was actually a lot tougher to pull off than it looked like because it's, it's easy to suppose that you're going to get the initial CC down there but sunbird was already at half before getting even chunked out and the wave was double stacked so it was going to be a lot of extra damage coming out from the minions and you can never uh sleep on brand damage if, if you get hit by a whole combo even from behind that's going to do so much work so probably a good decision to pull off there yeah, absolutely. They were very healthy, the bottom laners. Oh, I'm going to go for it now, though. Just straight Cataclysm forward onto the Misfortune. They were able to separate the brand. He was too far up, and he had no way out. He did have the Flash, but deciding not to expend it. Just figured he was done for either way, and that will be a kill. I believe that one did go over to Calmed on the Jarvan. Yeah, and uh, I think that that was an interesting interaction there the the cataclysm oh, being dropped on misfortune really walled off any escape route okay oh, that's a mumu making his way down here spoils gonna pop the uh, the soul shackles and go golden underneath the tower but he's not really able to make anything happen he's able to buy a little bit of time the sunbird gonna get locked up by the curse of the sad mummy he's burning down to the red buff the bandage toss gonna finish him off gimpties gets his revenge yeah, back at it in the bot lane. Both of these junglers just going bot on repeat. Yeah. That time under the tower was just a little bit too deep to go for the bot lane of Requiem Collective. They get punished for it, and uh, now we're back closer to an even game state. Yeah, that was Calm's trying to make his way into the river to contest this Dragon but Brand. Able to cut him off and land the combo. Keep himself safe. Oh, gets hit by the Never Move, though. Oh, but the EQ is whiffed by Calm. Then he takes a whole lot of bullets right to the face. Now Kitsune in some trouble. Has the Demonic Ascendant to keep himself alive. And that's extremely low on the Brand. Kali trapped between a Dragon and a Nyla. That's not where he wanted to be. And now Bugen forced the Flash away to keep himself alive. In a very chaotic fight around the dragon, the Jarvan goes down, but it's the side of Requiem Collective that end up on top. Yeah, that's so difficult for Sun Gaming because they they wanted that fight, and the fight looked good for them, but the, to set it up, they had to start up that Drake, and the Drake was just chipping away at them that whole fight, and that meant that they had to retreat. I think it was a one-for-one one overall, but they will be giving this Drake up. So that is a pretty positive result if you are the side of Requiem Collective. And uh, now with that first Drake secured, they can look to start snowballing their lead. I think that they have the better scaling here, so they should be feeling pretty good. Uh, but uh, uh, oh dear, Peyo in some trouble. There goes the Death Realm. Nasus is going to ascend underneath his tower to get that extra HP. And so a trade of the Ultimates between the top laners, but... Poor Peo up here is becoming extremely familiar with how metal tastes as Tortuga is just continuing to clobber him with the mace up there. 
Yeah, pretty big CS gap developing there, about 40 right now uh, with the wave pushing in. Uh, but I think that that's kind of something that's stabilizing the gold advantage at only a around 600 here for the moment. Uh, because Tortuga has a big advantage in that top lane. And we'll see if that ends up translating into, you know, some kills going over some objectives on the top side of the map. Uh, Stun Gaming have a resource there, but they will have to put that to good use because right now the rest of the map's looking pretty favorable for Requiem Collective. I definitely agree there, Tiger. Just a quick check-in on the status of everything here. We have we are at 12 minutes into the game. Two minutes left until turret plates fall. Nobody has made any moves towards this first Herald just yet. So not looking very likely that that... Oh, that's a flash in for the big Nyla ultimate. Gets the pull in onto two. The flash forward for Spoils as well. Wants to follow up on that one. But the bullet time is big. But the, the misfortune locked herself in place for the dark binding to connect. And the spooky dirt going to take the kill. Meanwhile, topside comes. Going with the cataclysm. Oh, there's just the junglers are both ganking at the same time. Sunbird is not going to find any way out of this one. The Nyla cannot escape from the sad little mummy. And the Mordekaiser will be able to escape from the very angry man with a flag. Uh, and he will be able to walk that one out. So, success, I think, we can say for both junglers. But Gimti is able to get the kill. Calm looking to convert this into an objective take, though. Getting first dragon and first hero of the game always feels really good as a jungler. Uh, but he's not going to have too much time to drop that hero before plates fall. So, I'm interested to see... What the play is here for Abyssal Nightmare in the next minute or so. Yeah, the the gank in the bot lane working out has actually completely evened up the gold. I, I love your terminology, the spooky dirt. That's fantastic. <laughs> I know it used to be called Tormented Soil, but I yeah, think that they changed it to Tormented Shadow. I don't like that change. It's worse. It's a worse name. Oh, and that's a worse situation for Kitsune. Not where he wanted to be at all. That's going to be a binding, collecting, and a take Brand to, down to about 50%. Very squishy champion there. Um, but the mid laner already going down means Spoil's not going to be able to look for too much more here. Yeah, and uh, I think that the, with the Rift Herald being picked up, that should be about traded back to even. But like you said, there's not much time left for plates to be taken. I don't think that there's any way that plates actually get taken since yeah. uh, Calm is currently in base. Uh, but they can still look to get the first tower with it. They'll probably be taking it towards the bot lane. So uh, Requiem Collective trying to get the gold onto the carries here. Uh, if we look at the individual gold, which I know that uh, Inti is not going to be able to do for us, but uh, I can just give the explanation it right now it's about 400 in top lane for tortuga uh, about 500 in jungle for gimpties and pretty much dead even everywhere else on the map so a lot of cs advantages building up uh in the top lane especially but just good csing from stun gaming has kept this one close and in their advantage yeah it certainly has but we are moving towards a very powerful part of the game for the abyssal nightmares composition you know once these champions hit level 11 get uh you know these first item completions for the neela for the swain they are going to be spiking pretty hard oh payo i don't think that's a good situation is he gonna be put in the death realm right here i think Mordekaiser could have just gone for it there not sure why tortuga held on to the ultimate i guess just happy getting the trade for now does have Nasus down to about 50% under the tower. Oh, there's another combo landing for the Master of Metal. I don't think that there's a whole lot of situations where... Well, we oh, got a fight. going in. Yes, Hillsang in some trouble here. Cataclysm comes down. Nyla dashes in. Easy kill picked up. A Jarvan will get traded back in the teleport. Oh, Gipties, where did this Amumu come from? What the heck? He just comes out of nowhere, turns this play completely around. The jungler and the AD both traded back. Now Kali walking underneath the tower, trying to get that last kill, make it rain. Not quite able to finish off the Morgana, but an excellent counter gank from the Amumu means that Stunned Gaming Invictus Nebula, excuse me, going to be coming out on top in that one. Yeah, they're starting to set up these huge... Uh 
combos and Kali is getting some big bullet times off that's starting to have a pretty big impact yeah. here um, and they're able to pick up the second Drake so that evens up the count and it's a really good position for stun gaming to be in right now uh, looks like Hillisang's looking for a roam to mid lane but I don't think it's gonna work out uh, we might have a 2v2 but uh, what I was going to say before was that I don't think that there's ever really a time where Mordekaiser wants to use ult in the 1v1. It's just a really good reactionary tool to help get out of the gank. But also, if you're in a situation where you're looking to solo kill Nasus, you can just do it anyways without ulting him in most cases. All right. Well, uh... Certainly going to be holding on to that one for now. Meanwhile, we did see the Rift Herald charge into that bot lane tier one, so that will indeed be the first brick going over to Abyssal Nightmare here on the red side. They are still a little bit behind in gold, but certainly, you know, feeling pretty decent about their control over the map at this point in time. Still have quite a while uh, until the next dragon spawns, so not really able to collect any other objectives in the immediate future. Um, but doing okay for now. We do have the Immortal Shield Bow completion for Sunbird. Kitsune walking forward. Bugen trying, throwing down the Unleashed Power. Able to get a kill back. So a trade between the mid laners. But now Gimthys in a 1v2 situation has the Curse of the Sad Mummy. And the Amumu is extremely tanky. He flashes away from the flag and drag. The Soul Shackles, it's not enough. The Morgana goes down to Mumu. In the 1v2, he lands the bandage toss. Gimthys gets the flash out of the Jarvan as well. And Amumu just dominating in the mid lane there i think that well we, okay we turn goes fight. down sunbird now in a 1v2 of his own he'll say moving forward not going to land the fireball and nila will escape does cost the flash though and we have both tier ones in the bottom lane now destroyed a potential 1v1 breaking out in the top lane here. Tortuga actually pretty low. Going to throw down the Death Realm now. He's using it for the 1v1. I think that might be a bad sign for the Mordekaiser. He flashes away, and it doesn't matter. He gets stacked. The dog getting bigger. Payo getting paid. Yeah, the, the only thing that ulting does give you is you get those resistances. But uh, when you're in a situation where you might die anyways, that's not the 1v1 you want to take. Especially the later the game gets, Nasus is going to just be so powerful. Peo, knowing when to go all in, burning that uh, ghost and flash to set up the play. And uh, now going to be able to stack a turret as well. So this is a very advantageous spot for Peo to be in, despite that early deficit. Yeah, Divine Sunderer completion, level 12. He was managed managed to stay even with the Mordekaiser in EXP. You know, it's kind of what we were discussing at the very beginning of the game. He's able to sustain enough with the fleet footwork where Mordekaiser can't quite push him all the way out of lane. Now, Colm's going to go in. Going to land the EQ, never move, pulls him back. The uh, Binding lasts absolutely forever. Gimtis is going to find the four-man Curse of the Sad Mummy. But he really just doesn't have any friends. He has no friends in the area, and so he will be cut down by Abyssal Nightmare. They're going to be able to pick up a free kill in the river and tie this game up at 12 to 12. They do not have time, sadly, to finish the Herald. It will despawn um, before they can kill this one, and they may have set themselves up in a little bit of a tricky situation here uh, as Hillsang moves forward on the brand. Pretty menacingly, not going to be able to lock anybody down, though. We will just see the disengage after that one pick onto the enemy jungle. Yeah, and uh, always good to be stacking up those picks. And uh, the gold has once again stabilized back to dead even. So I, I think that both of these teams are playing this game out on pretty close terms. And uh, it's really interesting yeah. to see how... Uh, or even our first match of the season, we're getting a close setup between two teams on very yes. similar levels. Absolutely, Tiger. Our first stream of the season could not be going any better. We are witnessing quite the slugfest between these two squads. But there is something that I did want to touch on that I actually don't have time to touch on right now. Because we have 15 seconds until the third dragon spawns. We already have a lot of people congregating here towards the bottom side of the map. But notably, Neela and Swain both in base right now. Kitsune does have the TP, but Neela going to have to walk her way all the way back over here. 
which means that River Control is going to be taken by Stunned Nebula. Holding position in the river now, and Tortuga does have ultimate on the Mordekaiser, so he can deny any kind of steal attempt, assuming that he does stick around near the objective here. Calm, I think, not going to go for it. Yeah, Black Shield going to prevent the Jarvan from getting stunned, but there is no way into the river there for Requiem Collective, and they will just be forced to give up that first Infernal. Uh, but on the flip side, they are having Peo split push in the top side. Oh, that's a bandage cross for Gimti. Sunbird extremely low now. Shield bow procs under the tower. Not enough. Curse of the Sad Mummy locks him down long enough for Hillisang to pick up the kill. Just burns him down. Neela not able to escape. And that is the kill lead. In addition to the dragon, now collected by Stun Nebula, finding themselves in a fairly favorable position at this point in the game. Although Nasus is getting stronger in the side lane, Tiger. Yeah, I think that, uh... Oh. oh. Ah, is he dead? I think he might be dead. Yeah, he is oh, dead. Oh, he's ignited and dead. Yep, and even used the flash, did Hillisang there. Not what you wanted to see. Usually, you know, we, we're more familiar with Hillisang flashing forward for the play. That was certainly not uh, <laughs> very Hillisang of him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for those of us familiar with the pro play scene, that's certainly the case. But I think uh, that there's some build noteworthiness here. Spoils went for the Leandries on the Okay, Morgana. that is a scatter of the week. That is a dead Morgana. Bogan presses his outplay button and finds another kill. And once again, 14 to 13, a one kill lead for Nebula. Yeah, these teams just keep finding ways to fight each other and uh, finding picks in particular. It seems like there's a lot of pick for both sides. I mean, between the bandage toss into searing shot combination, uh, you got the never move and the dark bindings. Everybody's finding a way to set up kills for their teams, and I'm enjoying watching these teams go back and forth. But I'm, I wish that they would find uh, like a fight on even terms instead of just going back and forth and getting caught out. Yeah, these uh, these fights have been quite chaotic, but uh, we are very much in team fight time now, Tiger. This is absolutely the part of the game where these squads are going to be looking to contest objectives. They're looking to group up and make something happen as a squad. And something that we have not touched on yet is the fact that the team composition for Stunned Nebula is almost entirely magic damage. Four out of five, and honestly, four and a half. I'm pretty sure uh, Miss, you know, half of Misfortune's abilities do scale with AP. Oh my goodness. Gimpty's Bandit Trust onto the tower. Lines up for the bullet time. Spoils is just dead. It's just too much damage. I don't think the all AP matters if you just keep picking people off like this. But Hillisang doesn't have an hour. Oh, he did have a stopwatch, actually. He could have dropped the aggro, but he just dies to the tower. Gimpty's now moving forward. Doesn't have the Curse of the Sad Mummy anymore. Doesn't land the Bandit Trust. Doesn't matter. But Calm's here. Coming into the mid lane, throws down the Cataclysm. Gimpy's going to flash away, but takes the turret aggro, and the tower shot will finish him off. Jarvan gets one back. It's a two for two in the mid lane, but the tier one did go down. Stun Nebula got what they came for, and it looks like they will make their way out. The surviving members, that is. Yeah, uh, a lot of what we've already been seeing in that fight, but I wanted to go back and touch on the point you were making before about mm -hmm. how heavy magic damage focused that the side of stun gaming is and i think that you're right there and and i think that is also well there's these two are gonna i think oh, they're, they're not gonna they're fight fine. it out they look yeah. like they're gonna fight it out somebody's nope. gonna fight it surely uh, someone might not be here. fine no he's <laughs> fine he's gonna walk it out all right but here here's the important piece the whether you do AP or AD is not important. It's whether you do physical damage or magic damage. Oh, uh, Hillisang is in some trouble here. Nyla dashes forward. Hillisang going to use the stopwatch now. I don't know if it's going to save him. Nyla going to go ahead and whip him in the back. Pick up the kill. Teleport coming down now into the mid lane. Uh, Syndra, not quite sure what the angle was there, but uh, I don't think she's necessarily going to find one. Gimpty is also not going to go for it. And, oh, here comes Peo. That's a big dog ghosting into the fight. 
but the counter engaged pretty decent. Oh, but here comes the Cataclysm. Chrome zoning away the back line, and now Amuma will fall first. And decent bullet time over the top. Gets out a lot of damage with a flash forward for the never move. Kitsune seals the deal, and Nasus gets the stack. It's going to be a two for nothing in the mid lane. Requiem Collective taking the lead. Yeah, Peo has officially scaled 3-0-1 on the Nasus. Almost caught up in CS even. Third Drake, or this is the fourth Drake of the game, actually. But it will be the second that's taken down here by Requiem Collective. And they will even up the Drakes here. And I think that we're getting to the spot where the scaling is taking over. And Requiem Collective have a lot of upside looking through the rest of the game. Uh, they still aren't in a spot where they can't throw, but I think that it's the game is in their hands. And look at these builds, man. Spirit Visage, second item for the Nasus. Force of Nature, second item for Calm Down the Jarvan. Some very, very intelligent itemization coming out from the top side, I think, here of Requiem Collective Gaming. And you see how tanky they are in these fights. I mean, Jarvan went so deep in that last fight to zone out the rest of the enemy team while Gimpty's got taken out uh, by the Mila and the Swain. And he just didn't die. He was able to make it out, no problem. Uh, and, you know, same for Nasus. We saw him initiating that fight, just running straight at their faces and just not afraid of anything. And I, I really feel like Stunned Nebula are going to have to come up with some kind of huge, huge angle. Oh my goodness, Calm just flying him to EQ Cataclysm combo. And poor Misfortune has no way out of that one. Going to get cleaned up for a killing spree now for Jarvan. And they look like they might fancy themselves a Baron. No Marksman on the enemy team is significantly going to reduce their damage output, especially when that's the only AD member. I really think they could start up the Baron here. Doesn't look like they're going to do it, though. Yeah, and not only is uh, Kali the only member with physical damage uh but really the only member with dps either i mean we're, we're not talking about uh, an ap amumu build here and uh mordekaiser not going to be doing as much damage from behind here it's a rift maker demonic embrace there's some damage but not dps on the same level as a, a kraken slayer ldr misfortune so with Kali out of the fight, I definitely think they could have started the Baron. It's a pretty healthy take, especially with Immortal Shield Bonilla. And uh, I think that they're in a position where the only way that I can see a team fight going well for Stun Gaming is if they get a CC chain and the bullet time just takes out like two thirds of the health of at least three members. This is the strategy now for Stun Nebula, the Fanatic Bush. No, they have Hilla saying the Fnatic Bush strategy could work. They caught Calm trying to do some face checking, but look at the magic resist. He just doesn't take any damage from the Syndra ult. Bullet time, not the best that time around. Gimpy's going to cut pulled back by the Nilo ultimate, but not quite enough damage to finish off the Amumu either. Swain wasn't even there for this fight. Didn't quite have the teleport off of cooldown. So not able to punish there was RCG. Uh, a it's kind of a desperate look, it seemed like, from Stunned Nebula, where they weren't able to find anything. They're two minutes away from the next dragon. Going to be Infernal Soul Point for whoever picks it up. Yeah, I don't mind the attempt there. Almost looked like they would be able to get a pick, and through that part, I, I was on board with Stun Gaming's uh, plan. They just kind of kept throwing stuff at it, and the, the more that it wasn't working, the more they doubled down. They didn't blow any flashes, I don't think, so it's not really all that bad. Ooh, now they're looking for something looking again. scary there. Amumu going back in, but the binding connects, denying any kind of aggressive move. Did have the flash, but did not have the ultimate on the Sad Mummy, so couldn't have gone for any really massive engage. But look at this. Peo has hit 16. Let's check in on the stacks there for the big dog. He's at 800. He is going to be hitting like an absolute truck for the rest of the game. Yeah, trucks are lucky to be compared to Peyo's Nasus <laughs> right now, honestly. I, I feel like it's Big going truck. to not only be impossible uh, to take the damage that's being dealt, 
but I don't think that there's much of a way to kill him either. I mean, Kali has to keep attacking him with consistent damage for how long? Four seconds? Five seconds? Are you seriously going to get that at any point in a fight? I think it's really unlikely that we'll ever see that. So I would say that Peo is almost completely unkillable unless he's caught out alone in a side lane 1v5. And he has the ghost of such a strong summoner spell now at this point in the game since he's so powerful he can just run at these guys and they have very little in the way of answers you know mordekaiser could ult him to to deny the backline access but mordekaiser doesn't win that 1v1 anymore we'll just have to see how they decide to play it out we have both teams gathered in the river for another big old team fight here tiger dragon is on the map and Syndra is coming around from the side, looking for a little bit of a flank. Calm goes in. Hillisang flashes away. Cataclysm onto Kali. She will also flash to keep herself alive. Jarvan flashing into the pit. Smites the dragon for HP. Let me keep your eyes on Peyo. He's trapped in the death run. Now Kitsune going into the back line, and he has got so much damage on the Swain as well. He's flashed away in the Demonic Ascension, barely able to keep himself alive. And the scaling, as we predicted, has come through. It's the clean 5 for 0 Requiem Collective gaming Abyssal Nightmare ready to finish off game one and put themselves in position to take their first match win of the season. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure that they'll be able to completely end the game off of this. I mean, that uh, Q damage to towers is just absolutely absurd. So Peyo's probably going to split push mid lane and take like an inhib, but I don't think yeah, that yeah. the death timers are long enough that the game just ends. But taking that third Infernal Drake plus the Baron is going to feel really nice. And uh, as you're saying, these fights are just getting more and more lopsided in favor of Requiem Collective Gaming. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're really in position to take game one here. Yeah, it's uh, the, the side of Stun Nebula going to need a miracle at this point to come back into this one. Looking uh, for some internet outages potentially on the enemy team uh, is really their their best bet, I think, at this point in time. In terms of coming back here in this first game, at least. And uh, I don't know if that's particularly likely. We have seem to have some some pretty stable connections uh, for the entirety of this first game so far. So I think feeling pretty good about it are the side of Requiem Collective. Yeah, no, one, no one's pinging their ping in the chat, so it that's seems like, like it's pretty balanced. But honestly, Peo could DC for five seconds and still not take any damage, so True. That, that, True. that's that's just fine. Uh, but now with the Baron buff, I think that we're going to see... Uh, oh, it looks like it's these. going to be a 4-1. I would send Peo to the side lane and get all three lanes pushing, but I, like I think that. that any choice is going to be a good choice here as long as it's a decisive one. Okay, that looked pretty decisive to me. Calm going in with the Cataclysm onto the bot lane, and they will just com get completely eviscerated. That was the Syndra and the Misfortune, excuse me. Didn't really matter, though. It was two of the carries just getting completely deleted, and then Mordekaiser found himself in a place where he really didn't want to be. And that's going to be the quick three more kills picked up. 27-16 to 16 now on the scoreboard, and the base is ready to be destroyed. Amumu gets pulled back. Gets taken down, and now Hill is saying the last man standing uh, watching his structures get demolished. 20 seconds still on Syndra and Misfortune. They're not going to be coming back in time here. They want to finish the job. Requiem Collective can't quite get the ace, and they do lose their Morgana. A little bit unfortunate there, but I don't think it's really going to matter as the Nexus is destroyed. And RCG take game number one. Yeah, a pretty clean game there. Uh, they knew that they had the scaling that they wanted to wait until the mid game to start really getting the fights on. And once the mid game came, then they were just able to show that they had the better comp. They had uh, the better mastery of their champions and they knew how to win the game. And that's exactly what they did. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, it was it was a little bit it was a little bit close in the in the early minutes for sure. You know, we were appreciating the closeness of our of our first game, uh, and and you know, I think it, it was definitely very competitive. But you know, when when we look back, uh, I really th you know hindsight twenty twenty right, and I really think the draft gap was pretty significant. 
in favor of Requiem Collective Gaming. They really just, they had the scaling. They had themselves some pretty decently strong lanes in, in mid and bot side. Peo with some very intelligent rune choices and itemization really made the Nasus pick work extremely well. Uh, and yeah, it, it really just seemed like across the board, some strong performances. And like you said, they just saw their, their moment. They knew the game plan and they pulled the trigger when they needed to. Yeah, I'm not so confident in being able to just shred the draft of stun gaming so okay. easily. I think that they had uh, some execution that could have been better, and like it didn't seem like they knew exactly what direction they wanted to go with their game plan early on in the game. They definitely had their moments, and I think that uh, they showed that they can be a strong competitor going through the rest of this series. Uh, but I, th I think that we definitely have to just give a lot of credit to Requiem Collective for playing out their comp expertly. So I I'm looking forward to seeing if there's going to be any changes going into Game 2, but I, I don't think that they have to be drastic changes if you're stunned gaming. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as we were just saying, it was the game was close for for a long time. So I do agree. You know, I, I don't think they need to to throw the whole book out or anything. And and of course, it is just the, the first game of the season as well. So you know, we do also have to consider. You know, maybe there were some nerves at play here. Maybe the team isn't very practiced together, and and that's why uh, you know we feel like the coordination wasn't necessarily there in this in this first game. Um, but you know, regardless, they will have the opportunity to bounce back here as we move towards game number two. But we will, of course, be going to a quick break first. We won't be gone long, though, as I'm sure these teams are itching to get back onto the rift. So we will see you very soon with the continuation of Style Season 13, Week 1. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are just about ready to get underway with our second draft of the night. Uh, we have seen Stunned Gaming Nebula elect to stay on the blue side, which I think is not terribly surprising. It does, of course, mean that Requiem Collective will be returning to the red side. Uh, Tiger, do you agree that this is an unsurprising decision? Yeah, I think that blue side has definitely been the more favored side of recent. Uh, but before we get into draft, do you want to go back over the recap of uh, the finals from season 12? We, oh. Since we didn't get that coming through. Do you want me to do the intro again? Yeah, I, I think that we've got a moment here. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so apologies again everybody for for that was uh you know some technical difficulties at the start of the stream there so just pretend uh that you're hearing this right after we went live uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of go from there just bear with me. hello hello to all of you lovely people out there on the internet welcome to style season 13 now before we dive into game two here quick congratulations to all of our season 12 champions so the victors of the Ixtal Division were, of course, the Banana Brawlers, Triumphant in Targon, YAC Gaming, the winners of Ionia, Mythic Fabled, and, of course, the champions of Shurima, the strongest team in the most skilled, most competitive division in the Style League, University of Alberta Amber. You, Alberta, able to walk away from last season with that sweet first-place prize money in that top division of 700 us dollars that is a lot of tim hortons and maple syrup once again a big congrats to all of our first place teams from last season but today is a new day starting now is a new season and i am certain that all these squads are ready to show us their stuff once again and now on to game two of the night let me get this draft up on your screens we are pretty much through the bands already tiger thanks for humoring me that was just as good as the first time you did it, crewman. It's fantastic stuff there. Thank you for the recap. But as you say, we're getting right on into the draft. This time, Stun Gaming choosing to ban the misfortune themselves. I definitely think that Kali had some good effect on that misfortune. Uh, but if they wanted to go a different direction, then understandable to ban it out. Uh, yeah. and uh, other than that pretty similar in the band table and it's going to be the Swain first pick so I think that there's some potential to flex that but most likely looking at a mid lane Swain yeah wanting to deny that from Kitsune this time around really he did definitely have a strong performance on it in the last game you know we saw him landing all of those never moves even in the early laning phase really seemed like he was making Bugen's life extraordinarily difficult but that, I think, is a very strong response from Abyssal Nightmare. Sivir, not quite uh, what she once was a couple of patches ago, but still very strong scaling hyper carry here in the bottom side for Sunbird. And then the Lilia, I think, pairs extremely well with it and is extremely strong in the meta right now. That is an interesting response. What do you think about that? Yeah. Senna Wukong, is that the bot lane? Uh, it could be a Senna Wukong bot lane. It could also be a Senna Swain bot lane. A lot of good pairings for Senna uh, available. So holding some flexes once again. Uh, and I think that the Silver Lilia sets me up to expect something like a Yumi here or maybe like a Lulu. I would think Enchanter is the way they want to go. Going to go double spell shields instead. So uh, not going to be hit by any CC this time around, it looks like. <laughs> that sure is the plan, yes. And, uh, you know, there is kind of a lot of CC over here for Sun Gaming Nebula, to be fair. Although uh, it can be a little bit uh, difficult to, to deal with uh, Wukong CC in particular, given that he has two charges of the ultimate. Um, and if you get knocked up once, then that's, you know, really probably all that the monkey needs see what the rest of the bands here are going to be i just want to, i want to check in really quickly yes so the red side bands from abyssal nightmare do look like they're going to be exactly identical from the bands that they had in game number one makes a decent amount of sense given the fact that they won game number one um but the picks obviously as we've already been pointing out are a little bit different here so interested to see what kind of adjustments they're planning on making as we move into the second game and there is a, a different band so the mouse are going to be hitting the bench instead of the soraka 
that's what was removed in the previous game. Maybe uh, Abyssal Nightmare is predicting that the support is indeed already locked in here over on the blue side. Yeah, and, and at the very least, you're not going to pick Soraka with Senna, most likely. So I think that that makes a lot of sense. Probably going to be more of the frontline variety. If it's not the Wukong or Swain, then I would expect something like a Tom Kench. But at that point, you're locking in a pretty short-range comp to begin with. I wouldn't mind seeing as well just something to get some more range on the comp. Uh, maybe like an Orn top would be really good here for stun gaming Nebula uh, to help them get longer range on their engage. They look like they're going towards a big AoE team fight wombo combo style yeah. once again. And I think that the the Orn especially gives long range to help out with that. Yeah, seems definitely like Stunned Gaming are trying to match kind of the style of composition that we saw come out from Abyssal Nightmare in that game number one, focusing a lot more on the team fights. Uh, and that is going to be the Syndra locked in in response to the victor. So Bugen sticking to his guns now that he doesn't have to lane against a Swain. Uh, maybe he's, he's feeling pretty confident that Syndra is... Once again, the pick here. Uh, interested to hear your thoughts, if you, if you have any knowledge of that Syndra-Victor matchup. I think that it should be pretty even throughout. I mean, Syndra and Victor have very similar play styles. The Fiora is a little bit of an interesting wrench into things that I'll get to in a second. Uh, but Syndra versus Victor, they both are kind of looking to get their upgrades on their abilities and become much stronger once that happens. I don't think that there's a whole lot of strength on either side. Syndra has a little bit more gank set up, so that that's something to note. But I don't think that that's going to be of huge impact oh. until level 6 has come through for either side. But it's the Warwick lock-in as well, so some spice coming up here at the end of the draft. Yes, indeed. I did just realize I have the wrong. I have last game's draft on the stream still. If you could just uh, <laughs> keep keep explaining how things are going for us, Tiger. Let me try and correct that really quick. All right, sounds good. So uh, to update the drafts, it was uh, Swain on B one, then Silver Lilia on R one R two, Senna Wukong on B two B three, Morgana on R three. Victor on R4, Syndra on What's up, y'all? Let's level up my Fiora overlay B5 using Adobe Illustrator. Warwick on R5. So it was holding the Lilia as a flex was the play Drop here. Down the effects, and texture, ending up range, sending it top into that Fiora the and then nice. picking the Warwick the in the jungle. Uh, so uh, there's a, a, a high burden of execution here on that CG of this one. They kind of have to land skill shots in order to set anything up. And uh, while they have a very speedy so team comp between Zipper, Lilia, and Warwick, uh, they don't have a whole lot of consistent gauge. They're kind of waiting to counter engage with the Victor and Morgana. They have a whole lot of area denial. If they can get to an objective first, that's going to be really good for them. But on the other side, Stun Game and Nebula, they kind of were building up to that sort of skirmishy team fight comp with some AoE between the Wukong and the Swain. Uh, but they kind of pivoted with their solo lane pickups here being Syndra and Fiora. Fiora definitely wants to have more duels and then complete 5v5 team fights. Uh, and Syndra as well is looking to get a lot of burst and pick onto one champion. I kind of like this adaptation because it's hard to walk into the Requiem Collective comp here. Uh, and I think that they've given themselves some flexibility where if they can get a 5v5 on their own terms, I think they're still better. But they also have the option to play around side lanes, play around trying to find those picks. So a lot of flexibility for that stunning game we have. Uh, and Royal Collective. I'm really interested to see how the Warwick plays out because that's a pick I've almost never seen in a competitive setting before. Uh, and definitely can be very strong in solo queue, but uh, we'll have to see here. 
Yeah, definitely. It is a very interesting last pick over here for Abyssal Nightmare, and Warwick's certainly not a champion that's going to be shying away from any of those skirmishes that you were just just discussing that Fiora does like to go for. So I can kind of see the reasoning uh, behind this. And the Warwick also, I think, is going to um, pair quite well with champions like uh, Lilia and, and Sivir that want to be, you know, really playing around movement speed and trying to kite around these fights, looking for those priority targets uh, that you want to be focusing down. Um, so it is, it is going to be interesting to see what Peo can do with this little bit of an unorthodox pick up there. Uh, the victor does stand out to me a little bit here, uh, it, not in necessarily in a great way for Abyssal Nightmare. I, I feel like he might have a little bit of a difficult time potentially uh, following up on, on some of these engages, but it, it will, of course, just depend on, on the game state and, and where everybody is positioned. Yeah, in game number one, Spoils did set up a lot of plays with some dark binding connections, and that can be holding true here to game number two. And what I do like here with the Victor pick is that you can put down the gravity field as a follow-up to some of this initial pick CC. If you land a dark binding, if you land the infinite duress Warwick uh, or a lilting lullaby, then all of those things are long enough in duration that if you put the gravity field over someone right as they get hit by it, then they will still be CC'd by the time the yeah. stun actually comes through. So that should be a good combination there. Absolutely. Uh, but now we kind of have to consider uh, who we are trying to CC, who we're trying to pick over here on the side of stunned nebula because there aren't necessarily a ton of great options i would say obviously you can go for the syndra or the senna if you can get on top of them but both will probably be playing at a pretty decent range and uh wukong swain and fiora are generally kind of okay just trying to fight their way out of those kinds of situations um but wh what do you think do you do you favor one of these uh comps pretty heavily here now that we see them uh all fleshed out what do you think, Tiger? Yeah, um, I think that uh, the adaptation here from Stunned Gaming is really nice to see, and they've given themselves some more scaling by picking up this Senna and this Fiora. Yeah. So I, I like what they're looking at going into game two. Uh, and the Warwick is a, the real wild card here, so I'm not really sure what to make mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I, I guess that I have the falling back on comfort sort of idea that knowing what I can expect from this comp that Stun Gaming has makes me toward, sort of favor them. But uh, I definitely could go either way. But if I have to pick one, I'll go with Stun Gaming here in game number two. All right. Well, we just have a little bit left on our spectator delay. I do want to apologize to you all once again for the technical difficulties. My bad on that one. I'm not the most practiced right now at running the auto host, but thank you for bearing with me while I sort things out. We will be getting game number two underway very shortly. We do, of course, have the 1-0 lead in this best of three. Uh, Abyssal Nightmare in the lead right now but we will see if stunned nebula can bring things back and take us to that third game of the night don't go anywhere
right, folks, welcome back to the Rift. Game two now underway. Same sides as game number one. Abyssal Nightmare on the red side. Stunt Nebula on the blue. Looking to bounce back after a tough game one loss that was pretty close for most of the game until the scaling and the team finding really started to come online over here for Abyssal Nightmare, Royal Col Requiem Collective. And they really ended up very strong, had a lot of momentum at the end of that game number one. But uh, once again here, Tiger, fairly conservative opening from both sides. Yeah, I think that the scaling's a lot more even here in game number two. I think that with the Nasus last game uh, and, and with all of the early yeah. game stuff that Stunned was pulling out, Requiem Collective were at a very large advantage once they got to the late game. But this time around, I think that uh, there's still some power in the Requiem Collective late game, but it's pretty well matched. So I, I think that uh, we're not going to see a similar situation where one team just hits their break point and just starts absolutely destroying the other team. If that's going to happen, it's going to be attached to a gold lead. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, there are there are some other things to consider here. You know, we know that uh, Fiora, later on into the game, does become a little bit of a menace in the side lane. And while we are not necessarily sure what to expect from this Warwick top lane, I have a hard time believing that he's going to be excited about 1v1ing a Fiora later on when she has a few items under her belt. I assume there will be some armor mixed in there for Fiora as well. Uh, potentially even a, a Bramble Vest or something like this that's going to make what Warwick wants to do much more difficult. But he is very strong, as we can see here early on, taking some bites out of the uh, Swordswoman. Yeah, my impression is that this is a lane-dominant counter pick, uh, where Peo is expecting to come out ahead after, like, level 9 by, like, 30 or 40 CS. They're going to be contending with a potential mm. gank here. Looks like a ward spied that one out. Love that look from Gimpties. Just did the very quick red blue gromp, fast level three, straight towards top side, but a nice ward from Peo. Stops that gank before it can really get started. Lilia also on the top side of the map. So we have our junglers mirroring each other's paths here in this second game. Very patient right now as Gimpties waiting in that line brush towards the top side of mid lane. Lilia just going to head straight for the Scuttle Crab. Looks like she's going to be able to pick that one up before the rotation comes through, but she's going to face check the mid jungle of a stunned Nebula, but going to be able to make her way out. Forced to flash, though. That was Lilia. Forced to flash out of the river, losing her summoner spell there. Not sure why we were watching the top laners during that, but um, close call for the deer. They yeah, get the crab, absolutely. Though. I think that uh, it's it's really interesting to see the difference here between a full clear coming out from mm -hmm. Calm versus Gimpties uh, going three camps and then trying two ganks, ultimately not succeeding at either. But it feels no. like it's just hard for this any of the... these ganks to work before uh, Gimpties hits level six. Uh, I was so, so bottom crab is still alive. That was Combs now going for his first gank of the game. Got the flash out of Bugen Syndra. So once again, a little bit of a rough start in the early laning phase for Bugen. You're on the Syndra, and it looks like Combs will complete the double crab. So fairly far ahead of the Wukong now. Uh, that is uh, about a three camp lead for the Lilia at the moment. Lots of top priority, mid priority as well. We haven't. Uh, watched too much of bot lane just yet just as i mentioned it though get a quick look down there looks like uh we do have the push for senna swain at the moment yeah it seems like it's very difficult for either of these teams to have kill threat because as soon as a cc lands for stun gaming it just gets countered by a bunch of spell shields uh, and the other direction, if Requiem Collective mm -hmm. tries to go for an all-in, they just deal with too much healing. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of healing between the Swain and the Senna there. And, uh, of course, the, the Fiora. But um, Fiora, gonna actually need to go back to base to heal for this one. Don't want to be hanging around low HP like that when uh, there's a Warwick just walking around looking hungry. Yeah, 
Uh, interestingly, it's barrier for Peo this game, so I, I'm not yeah. sure what the whole Warwick tech is in the top lane. I think that's lane. pretty standard Pe for Warwick top, is my understanding. Yeah, well, clearly Peo knows exactly what he's doing here. Uh, <laughs> we can see already a pretty big... Oh, Rupong here for the gank. Tortuga flashing away, trying to stay alive. The fear lands. Repost comes through. Is it enough? The slow Warwick not able to catch up. And the Wukong is too healthy. I don't think Warwick's necessarily going to be able to make his way out of this one. He does have his jungler here, though. The Swirl Seed can't quite connect. Flashing forward. Gimthys gets the first blood. But now can he make it out? Calm's pretty low mana here. Lilia not necessarily the strongest early on in the game. Fiora also ticking over to level 6 after that kill come in, comes through. Wants to get the wave in now. Playing aggressively forward. Calm doesn't have enough mana to do anything. And now one more auto will seal his fate. Wukong dives in with the Nimbus Strike and picks up kill number two. Well, Lilia definitely not the strongest in the early game without mana at the very least. I would I would say actually that out of all of the champions in this game, Lilia probably is the strongest in the early game, but not mattering there. And the first two kills going over to stun gaming feels a lot better than the spot they were in last game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is the start that they wanted. Remember, it was 2-0 in the other direction around this time in game number one. Of course, game number one ended up being extremely close for the first 20 minutes or so. Um, but, you know, this is, regardless, a much better start uh, in the first few minutes for Stone Nebula than what they had previously. Yep, and uh, both those kills actually going on to Gimpties, so that's yeah. just going to be a one strong Wukong I'm going to guess it's going to be a Divine Sunderer yep. coming up here, most likely. Ooh, Ooh that is a lot one. of damage for Boogan. Chaos Storm comes down. I don't think the Syndra might be toast here. One more tick, and there she goes. Kitsune picks up the Solo Bolo in mid lane. Yeah, kind of surprising to see just a straight-up gravity field landing a stun, but on top of that, just able to put down the full combo, and no flash means Boogan can't get out, so... Clean play there from Kitsune, and uh, that solo kill is going to help stabilize the situation and maybe even set up the first Drake going in favor of Requiem Collective. Yeah, should be able to lock down this first neutral objective of the game. We have Rift Herald spawning extremely soon as well. Calms, uh, if we remember from game number one, able to get both of those early neutrals, and the objectives did come into play later on you know able to win that massive fight around uh, i believe it was the fourth or fifth dragon uh, that really completely broke the game open in their favor so if calm is able to stack those up once again could easily get his team back into this one uh, they're, they're really never were out of it uh, to be fair yeah he get them on level footing anyways uh but I, i'm enjoying watching this build from the the warwick top. <laughs> I'm just seeing, oh, oh here's that's a in. drowsy syndra uh does have the flash now don't know if it's going to matter the cc too good there uses the flash dies anyway katsune picks up number two victor extremely accelerated now in this one it has a 20 cs lead as well and boogan just seems to be getting unfortunately outperformed a little bit here in mid lane Kitsune with a couple of nice kills to his name now, but here comes a Gimpties looking for a play into the top lane. Warwick only sitting on the Vamp Scepter for now. Does have the ultimate and the barrier available. Going to be tough to really lock the Warwick down here, I think, unless he wants to try and outplay this one. Senna ultimate comes across. There goes the Warwick ultimate. Going to fling himself underneath the turret. Keep himself safe for now. Now Calm making his way up into the top side. Repost for the slow. Lilia takes a lot of damage, but not going to be in any real danger at the moment. But uh, definitely, really, go ahead. Really nice dawning shadow coming up from Hilla saying, I think that without that, they're not anywhere close. Oh. Uh, oh. Playing okay. right on the edge here uh, is Peo almost yeah. falling there to a quick little Q coming out from Tortuga. But I think that uh, looking like a situation where with all the healing that uh, Warwick gets yeah. at low HP from his passive, uh, he, he's willing to play on these narrow margins, and uh, right now okay. it's going all right for him. It sure is, yes. Both top laners playing with fire. Neither one of them even has ignite, but both will walk away. And uh, Wukong now looking like he's going to secure that Rift Herald, so going to deny Calms the ability to get both of those neutrals. Calmed is in the area, but he's not going to be able to contest in time. 
arrow picked up by the side of Stone's Nebula. See what they can get done with it. They do have a little bit more time than uh, what we saw Calms have in the previous game. So they have should have more opportunity to potentially find some plates for themselves. Uh, no plates uh, picked up whatsoever just yet for Stone's Nebula in any lane. Um, but certainly expected value of the Rift Herald should change that. Yeah, it feels like there's been a lot of push in all three lanes actually coming out from Requiem Collective, uh -oh. which I wasn't expecting. Oh, dear. Oh, Bugan stood on the gravity well again and lines himself up for another Chaos Storm Death Ray combo. That's number three for Kitsune. Now, he has got to be closing in on his Mythic very soon if he doesn't have it already. Be looking up to pick up a, another plate or two for himself. No teleport either for Bugan, so even when he respawns, going to have to... Take the long walk of shame back up mid lane. Wukong's in the area, so if he wants to try and come in here and, and deny the victor from farming these plates. Okay, that's a fight breaking out in bot lane. We got the never move coming down. Gimthy is actually going for the play in mid. Cyclone comes out. Kitsune in some trouble here. <laughs> the bonk over the wall. The crushing blow. Gimthy's does exactly what the name suggests and crushes Kitsune there. Victor just a little bit too greedy hanging around in mid lane. Just a little bit too long. Actually, it looks like he had the flash there, but didn't think he could escape from the monkey. He just goes down. Yeah, I was just about to talk about the first game we saw a bunch of CS advantages for stun gaming. It's right. kind of the opposite this time around, uh, but still we've got a pretty even gold, uh, gold lead. Uh, not a large gold lead for either team, I should say. Uh, and and I think that um, once again the laning is just looking like uh, there's some advantages in one place or another, but none of them are super large. And uh, right now I'm looking to see if Kitsune is going to expand on that in gold lead in the mid lane because that's probably the biggest single lane uh, gap uh, with about 1k in total between those two laners. Yeah, went for the uh, cooldown boots on the Victor, interestingly. I'm not sure how common that is. Uh, don't really play a lot of Victor myself. Don't really uh, watch a lot of Victor either. Um, but definitely an interesting choice. Maybe just feeling like the enemy team is going to end up with a decent amount of magic resist. And so not feeling like the magic pen from the sword boots would necessarily be all that valuable. Does have a decent amount of uh, other magic damage sources on his team. So I think I, I can understand where he's coming from with that one. I think that the lucidity boots are more common on Victor than sword shoes because oh. uh, you just want to get as many abilities out as possible. The death ray okay. cooldown is pretty short and it does a lot of work with the Leandries, so that's that's what I'm expecting is the rationale there. But I think either one's probably defensible. Uh, right now, though, this far ahead, he doesn't okay, even... Okay, that, that is game. another Gravity Well locking up the Syndra. Will flash away this time. Keep herself alive for now. But the flash for the Death Ray, the heal from Hillisang keeps his mid laner alive. Hillisang in the right place at the right time there to prevent another kill from coming through. But that will be the second Dragon now given over. Meanwhile, on the top lane, we got a big old fist fight happening here. The repost from Tortuga is beautiful. Denies the infinite duress from locking him down and Peyo bit off just a little bit more than he could chew, quite literally. Yeah. Now Spoil is going to find a dark binding. Sunberg going to be moving his way back in there. Soul Shackles come out, locks down the, the Senna, and Hillisang will get taken out. Swain trying to turn it around. The Spoils is burning, and he will get traded back. But it's a two for one for the Requiem Collective bottom lane, and they tie the kill count up at five to five. Yeah, getting a couple kills onto the Sivir is going to feel really nice, and uh, I, I don't know exactly how close to item completion we are. It looks like Kraken Slayers just come through, and that first item, Zonius from Spoils, I, I really like that as a, some of what of a Morgana player myself as a support main anyways uh the zonia's first item on morgana feels really impactful especially when you're in a situation where you want to be able to go in with the soul shackles and try to find some stuns once you have that zonia's available you can do that without much risk of dying on the initial engage before the stuns go off so i i like that a lot and getting those kills in the bottom lane is, means that right now the gold is on the right members. 
if you are the side of uh, Requiem Collective. Absolutely, and that two for one that we just watched, both of the kills went over to Sunbird on the Sivir, getting Sivir accelerated. So important, need to get her towards that Infinity Edge spike before she can really have the ability to take over a game. And um, yeah, I, I agree with the uh, Zonia's comments you were making there as well. There's really no better option in terms of playmaking uh, itemization choices for spoils there on the Morgana. So team fighting definitely seems like it's the name of the game. And he set himself up very nicely to continue doing just that. We've got a little bit of a top side at Jungle Invade come through now from Requiem Collective. Able to steal away a couple of camps here from the hapless Monkey King. I think they'll get that one. Yeah, Gromp uh, put up a little bit of a fight, but let's go down eventually. Yeah, strong Gromp and trying <laughs> to reset uh, and Team get Gromp. back to full HP. Not able to do so. It reminded me of old Volibear passive where you just started healing up a ton of oh, yeah. health. But uh, it's going to be a Rift Herald take. It looks like probably uncontested here. Oh. We'll see if Sunbird is able to get out. Going in. Probably be able to. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's going to give an opportunity to break open some more towers. Probably going to be traded for a tower, so it's about even across map. Yeah, it looks like that bot tier one is going to get cleaned up by the set of swain lane down there for stone nebula but exactly as you predicted tiger this top tier one looking like it's going to be suffering a very similar fate that's the swirl seed connecting here comes the drowsy the robust forced out very early on here tortuga just no way out whatsoever way too much cc way too much damage fiora had no hope of escaping uh and now that is the uh, turret for turret trade but an extra kill on top for Requiem Collective, they're going to get the charge onto the Tier 2 here as well. No way for the side of Sun Nebula to really get over here and contest in any kind of timely manner. And they will actually lose two turrets here in the top lane. Meanwhile, Sivir is in bot lane to defend. Yeah, well, it looks like Requiem Collective are trying to start to pull away here. Uh, they were in a pretty similar spot last game when they started to gain an advantage. Uh, I don't think that, like I said before, I don't think that it's going to be quite as decisive of a comp scaling advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are showing an ability to convert small leads into bigger leads. So we'll see if they can continue that here in game number two. Definitely, definitely. And... You know, you're quite right that uh, the, the scaling isn't really a conversation that we can have this time around. You know, there's uh, a lot of strong scaling elements, of course, for the side of Requiem Collective. They have some nice hyper carries in mid lane and bot lane. But over here for uh, Stunned Nebula, Senna is one of the strong strongest scaling characters in the game. Like right up there with Kale in terms of hyper carry potential in the late game. You know, it just gets more and more range the more minutes that we play. And Swain, obviously, able to stack infinitely as well. Able to stack up that HP with the Soul Fragments. There's a nice W picked up. Kali just picking up a couple more right as I, right as I mention it. Swirlzy connects only onto one. The uh, Lilting Lullaby is available for Calms whenever he decides to go for it. The fight breaking out now. Swain going golden in the middle with the Demonic Ascension. Trying to buy some time. But his team isn't able to get a lot done. And he gets cut down right out of the Hourglass. And on the bottom side of the fight, Fiora was trying to make something happen on the flank, but not able to get a whole lot done there either. Now it's a 5v4, flashing in. His calm goes golden, gets the lullaby onto the carry. Gimti is trying to run now, but Kitsune is in there. He has the damage, and the Monkey King's going down. Pillasang now trying to kite towards the top side of the map, but Syndra and Senna are on the wrong side of Summoner's Rift right now. Bugan going to get cut down. Morgana traded back. Fiora now forced into 1v1 with Warwick towards the bottom side. Hillisang has absolutely no way out. He's going to get bonked by the big old Sleepy Stick. Lilia picks up another, and that's going to be Ocean Soul Point locked down for Wreck Collective. Yeah, and a strong team fight there. I watched Tortuga run straight into the back line. I was like, oh, is this going to be a Fiora popping off moment? But just not enough damage there to finish off any kills. And as soon as the first domino fell, it seemed like all the kills were going the direction of Requiem Collective, and they were able to take the fight and the Drake. And now it's just starting to become that much harder and to find ways, if you are stunned gaming Nebula, to, to take winning fights. 
and they're going to need to look for some picks, I think, if they want to get themselves back to an even game state. Yeah, definitely the case. They are starting to fall behind pretty significantly in gold here. Looking like about a 3,500 lead at the moment for RCG. Baron just now spawning onto the map. Just cresting the 20-minute mark here. And it does really feel like, once again, it's the objectives controlled by Calms and the rest of Requiem Collective. And it's the side of Stunned Nebula just kind of getting outperformed in the team fights. Yeah, and they, they're having a hard time finding any sort of consistency in the team fights where they can set something up and and follow it up. It just seems like when they go in, there's there's not a lot of cohesion in their team comp. And I was wanting to give them credit in the draft for the flexibility of their comp. They actually have to adapt throughout the game to utilize that. If they keep going in straight up trying to make a 5v5 play, that's the strong suit here for Requiem Collective. Their counter engage is massive between Morgana and Oh, Victor. it looks like in some trouble here. Forced to run away. Does have the root down and now maybe an overextension for the side of RCG. Sunbird in some trouble. The lullaby is not going to put Wukong to sleep soon enough. And that's one kill picked up. The Sivir goes down. Syndra gets traded back, though, but calms. Can he win out in the 1v1 against Hilla? Saying he can. He has enough damage, but he is going to lose his AD carry as his Sivir also gets shut down there alongside the Morgana. So a two-for-two two fight in the bottom side jungle. And honestly, as the team in the losing position, Stun Nebula isn't going to feel too bad about that. Yeah, I'm sure that they would have liked to be in a position where they could have turned that into a three for zero potentially, but you know, you got to take what you can get and try to set yourself up with some shutdowns. I believe there was a shutdown on Sunbird, so good job there and getting some kills on it over. And Gimpties yeah. has all of the gold, so I'm looking to Gimpties to try to make the plays to keep the hopes of Stun Nebula alive. But I, it's just not that easy to carry a team fight 1v5 as a Wukong. Yeah, it's, it's really not, uh, especially when the enemy team has so much movement speed and all these spell shields, and it just makes your life extremely difficult. Um, and they are on to the Baron, by the way. This is a 23-minute Baron attempt for the side of RCG. They already got it down to about 50%. Wukong, I don't think, is going to be able to make it over here in time. It's just gone. They just take it right in the face of a stunned nebula they secure the objective build their gold lead to about 5k and they're going to be looking to do some damage with this baron power play yeah that's such a quick baron take it's double leandries and double dps yeah. so uh there, there's not really a lot of time to respond to that and now with the baron buff i think that they should be looking to push at least two lanes and uh, get all of the rest of the towers outside of the base, if not break one of those inhib towers as well. What kind of formation uh, do you think you'd like to see out of RCG with their Baron buff here? They got about one minute on a potential ocean soul, so you know, keep that in mind. Yeah, so if if I was calling the shots here, I would Hold on put now. Let's, let's well. put a quick pin in that as Gimtees is looking for a pick on to Kitsune. He's going to flash away. The victor will keep himself alive for now. Has actually a three-level advantage on the Wukong, but uh, Gimtees is not afraid whatsoever. Going right back in. Maybe he should have been a little afraid as he took a lot of damage on the way out there. But Kitsune is also pretty low. Forced to use the flash there as well as the ultimate. Victor going to be... Going back to base for now. Needs to reset the HP bar. Has a teleport to get back out onto the map. Calm. Moving into the river. Looking to lock down a little bit of vision control. Has the sleep on a hill. Saying forces the flash out from the Senna. This is one of the carries from Stunned Nebula. And he gets cut down right before the dragon spawns. And now it's a 5v4. And Stunned Nebula have almost no chance of winning this fight without their Senna. I just don't think it's going to happen. They're going to have to give up this objective, I think. Looks like they want to move into contest, but that could even cost them the base. And oh no, it's just going to be an annihilation, isn't it, Tiger? Fiora goes down, Swain gets absolutely popped. And now it's really just, I mean, RCG could do whatever they want here. They might just be able to end the game, honestly, with the Baron buff. So Swirl C narrowly missing there might have been another kill. Yeah, I was going to say before that I wanted to see the Warwick top and the rest of the team mid, but at this point, they can just send everybody mid and try to end the game. 
Uh, they, they've got 15 seconds to work with on the 4v3. I guess that they're not going to try to take out the base just yet. They're going to pick up the soul. You're going to be in a perfectly fine position. Uh, but whatever the case, it seems like nothing that uh, Requiem Collective does can be wrong. They just find plays to make, and they found a bunch of picks there. Uh, really able to follow up well on all of those uh, and they're, they're just in a position where they they have to throw to lose and they're not willing to throw yeah i mean hillisang clearly knew that he that he needed to get vision in the area right because the dragon is spawning like they need some way to walk in to contest but he was all by himself it was calms that found him on the lilia just landed that first slow and then lilia has all the movement speed that she needs to run you down Poor Hillisang gets picked off there. The rest of his team gets absolutely dismantled in that one. And now they're up against Ocean Soul. The good news, or I guess uh, maybe not good news, but a silver lining at the very least uh, for Stun Nebula here is that they do already have some heal cut online from the top laner, from the jungler. You know, we do have some Grievous Wounds here already available. Um, but still, this is a very, very difficult uh, task now that they have ahead of them to try and try and pull this one back. Uh, that's a double sleep coming through from Palm to the center route. Very nice to buy the space there. And Lilia won't be able to find anything more. So a little bit a little bit greedy there, maybe from Calm to go for the sleep on that one, but didn't really cost him too much. Yeah, I'm not sure actually how much this heal cut is helping out because like Warwick does a lot of healing in a fight, so so that's understandable. And if you want to make the argument that Tortuga is planning on facing uh, Teo in the side lane, then sure. And now we're going to have a fight. Ooh, yeah, the siege commences. Kali going to throw out the Demonic Zendra. Nice Cyclone. And the back line goes Gimtis. Can he find the pick? He can. He takes out the Sivir. He finds the carry. Is it enough, though? Gimtis now flashing trying to stay alive. The Soul Shackles will lock him down. Spoils now. Going at Golden, keeping himself safe, and Tortuga's not able to do enough. He has the repost, but he can't take anybody else with him. It's two for one. Sivir, the only casualty. Morgana looking like she might follow, but the Black Shield keeps herself safe. 4v3 now on the map. It's RCG not ready to give up the siege just yet. They got another wave coming in, but they don't have any Baron buffs remaining. And I think it's likely that they will be pushed back here. Senna and Sintra should have a decent amount of wave clear. Calms. Takes a spear there. Only one more auto attack from Hill saying Lilia forced to go golden. Fugan flashing forward. It's going to be Swain that picks up the last hit. It's a shutdown onto Kali's Swain. That's a lot of money going into his pocket. Potentially going to get towards that third item. And they were able to hold the line at the top inhibitor turret. Yeah, it's good to see that stun gaming are not giving up this one just yet. They're looking to find fights that they can win. And that one, they at least coming out even on... They're looking to do some more work here in the top lane. Uh, okay, before the they're trying to chase here. down Kitsune, but he's level 16 on the victor. If he's able to kite you out, he will kill you. Kali not able to get in range to prolong the duration of his demonic ascension. So the chase will be given up as Spoils makes his way out of the enemy jungle. Yeah, and it, it's just hard to find anything right now. If you can't get in range to land any of the CC, it's it's not like you can chase down a Lilia or a Sivir. Even Victor is too fast at this point. And uh, right now, I think that it's just going to be Baron is the next objective here for Requiem Collective. They should be able to walk towards it, uh, set up the vision around it, and we saw how fast they take it last time oh, it's yeah. not going to be any slower this time I think <laughs> no that it's they can not look to do the same thing again absolutely we see them clearing out the vision now starting to make stun nebula sweat a little bit here there is a little bit of vision in that top side jungle for stn for them to try and make some kind of move towards that baron wukong is in the area gimtis is going to try to make his way into the river here but baron has been started gimtis has to be so careful he can't get picked here if he does the game is over he is probably just gonna have to go for a steal honestly this baron is burning down it's going down so quickly i don't think he's gonna be able to get in the pit he has the w ah can he make it in there he's going for the steal he's in the pit he gets it gimtis steals the baron he keeps his team in the game but he will cost him his life also, the Senna did go down there. Hillisane got picked off as well. Calm still on the chase. 
does have the Lilting Lullaby available. Kali is really in some trouble here. Don't know if the Swain's going to be able to escape. Here comes the Lullaby. The Demon is going to go golden. The, uh, the Demon Flayer's pops a flash over the Never Move. Beautifully done by Calm to seal the deal. Meanwhile, in the base, the Nexus turrets are already getting taken out. It was a nice steal from Gimpties. An extremely valiant attempt. You got to respect it from one jungler to another. It was a nice look. But unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. It will be Requiem Collective Gaming picking up their first win of the season. Yep, Requiem Collective Gaming with the strong showing here today. Uh, definitely were the better team in team fights in any late game situation. I think that their macro was very good. And they knew what they needed to do to win. And they were patient enough to let the victory come to them. It seemed like every time that uh, Stun Gaming were trying to be the aggressors, the answer was just right there from Requiem Collective. So good job to them on getting their first victory of the season. And uh, I th think that they will be looking like a pretty formidable opponent in the near future. Yeah, absolutely. Some really strong team fighting coming out of that Abyssal Nightmare squad. Um, and yeah, I think some really strong performances across the board, but especially I would like to shout out Kitsune in the mid lane there for some very strong laning. And also Calms uh, over there in the jungle with some really, really nice objective control throughout all stages of the game. But uh, from your perspective, Tiger, who do you think was the player of the series tonight for, for RCG? It's it's hard to just pick worse. one because I think it that is. in game one it was clearly Peo that was carrying pretty hard, but I, yeah. I guess that uh, I would say that from a consistency perspective, uh, Ban spoils Morgana. I think that that was just a strong <laughs> champion. I think it was finding a lot of picks, and that was what was setting up some of these big leads that made the rest of the team look so good. There was moments for everyone, but uh, but everyone beware of the uh, Requiem Collective Morgana pick. Yeah, absolutely. Spoils really uh, having an, an incredible showing on that champion two games in a row. You know, showed he could play it with multiple different uh, bot laners. You know, they could do, pull out a variety of different lanes down there with the Morgana. Um, you know, the, the Swain, obviously, for Kitsune in game one is something else to, to watch out for. But And, you know, Peyo with uh, the fairly unorthodox picks tonight. You know, at the Nasus, the Warwick, these are not necessarily the most meta champions, but he, he made them both look pretty good, I gotta say. Yeah, uh, it, when you talk about dog champions, uh, <laughs> Peyo, Peyo makes that a compliment. He plays oh, those dogs to the max. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, that's for sure. Um, but, Tiger, do you have any closing thoughts for us on tonight's match? Well, just excited to see what all of the teams for Season 13 have to bring for us. This was an ex it was a good matchup. I think that this was a good primer for the season. You know, there was some pretty decisive victories here for Requiem Collective. But Stun Gaming showed that they are in this one for the long haul as well. So hopefully we'll see some more of them. And I can't wait to see what all the other teams uh, want to show us. If they've got some more spicy picks like the Warwick and the Brand. Uh, and, and I'm just excited to see this whole season play out. Absolutely. Really excited uh, to be back. You know, really excited for the new season. As you say, Tiger, great to be casting with you once again as well, my friend. Uh, great. We had a, a nice reunion tonight, I think. And uh, congratulations to Abyssal Nightmare on their first win of the season. Thank you to both of our squads tonight for such an entertaining match for our first stream here of Season 13. Uh, and we will be back this Thursday at 9.30 Eastern. Uh, that's going to be... Me and you once again, Tiger, for Wolfpack Rendezvous going up, up against Chaotic Maelstrom. I believe uh, those are actually two of the stronger squads here in the Style League. So definitely excited for that matchup and see what those two teams are going to be pulling out for us. But for tonight, 
I do think that about does it. So thank you, everybody, very, very much for watching. Uh, from myself, from Tiger, from the entire production team over here at Style Esports. We love you. We appreciate you. And we hope to see you again real soon. Good night.